I'm Srinivasada. I'm the president of the Doheny Eye Institute and professor of ophthalmology at UCLA. Diabetic retinopathy is unfortunately a very common complication of diabetes which can lead to severe vision loss. Its typical manifestations are macular edema, uh, but also proliferative diabetic retinopathy with hemorrhage as well as retinal detachment. And it's a major public health problem. Uh, and the reason it's, it's a big public health problem is diabetic retinopathy is the leading cause of vision loss amongst working age individuals in developed nations, particularly in the United States, but in developed nations across the world. And it's especially a big challenge because of the fact that the retinopathy can be progressing in the background with the patient being completely asymptomatic, which is a real challenge because uh, these individuals may not come in um, until perhaps it's too late. Well, that also is one of the reasons why it's so critical uh, to actually um, uh, evaluate for and screen for diabetic retinopathy because 90% of the blindness, maybe even more than that, is preventable if someone can be detected in a timely fashion and then have um, appropriate treatment administered. And there are a lot of different barriers as to why this isn't happening. Uh, one of them is, as I said, the, the fact that the disease is asymptomatic. That's certainly a challenge. But the bigger barrier is really access. Uh, and, you know, diabetes is really an epidemic uh, worldwide, in, including the U.S. I mean, the, the rate at which the number of diabetics is increasing far exceeds the increase in the number of eye care providers. And this is where screening or developing efficient screening systems that can uh, identify patients with a disease efficiently is especially crucial. If you can develop automated tools to be able to automatically analyze the images, identify what, which patients actually need to be seen by an eye, eye care provider, they could dramatically streamline the system, providing more speedy referral, but also potentially doing it at a substantially lower cost. Um, working with INUC and my collaboration has been uh, in, in federally funded grant proposals to the NIH that we've worked on just because I, I believe it's an incredibly important project and need that this serves. We need to have automated tools uh, to address this problem uh, and my experience with INUC um, and their um, overall um, portfolio of products uh, is that uh, it, it's been quite uh, compelling in the sense that the, the products seem to be their, their approach to, to um, studying diabetic retinopathy, automatically um, evaluating the disease and quantifying it, seems to work across any platform because there are many different platforms um, uh, in terms of acquiring the images that one might consider for, for diabetic screening, including fundus camera systems. People are talking about, can you get the images from handheld um, devices like iPhones, for example, uh, as, as well as doing newer camera systems such as Optos wide field uh, systems that can capture images of the entire retina. You'd like to have algorithms that are generalizable, that can work regardless of the imaging technology. And that's been particularly, for me, gratifying uh, in, in working in a research perspective in a collaboration with INUC because their approach to doing um, diabetic retinopathy detection uh, seems, to be, uh, um, uh, seems to be scalable to all these different, um, or applicable to all of these different uh, imaging platforms. And I think that's the type of robust uh, type of approach that one needs uh, because you need to be able to design methods that can work in any screening environment because re regardless of what the screening, the actual hardware is for acquiring the images themselves. Mm -hmm.